Oh dear. So, we are doing our second mix through here on the wow. quiz preview. If some of you are looking at this and going, wait a minute, he's been here before. It's true, but we're doing different problems this time. So, first things first. Name the shifts, name the transformations for each radical expression. Reminder... Let me ask a couple of quick questions. First one, when we're looking at this h value that's under the radical, is that my up and down or my left and right moves? Left and right. And since it's opposite of h, it's the opposite of what we would typically think of with those. And then of course that leaves us the outside for up and down. So all I'm asking you for in the first section, and the, the lineup of the quiz tomorrow will be exactly the same, what are the shifts? So let's say, let's say we're doing number four. What are my two shifts going to be for number four? Right four, down three. That's all you need to tell me. Now, am I going to be nice enough to put this on the quiz tomorrow? No, no, that part you need to know, Okay. There will be a couple of things I'm going to mention as we're going through that I will have available to you during the quiz, but that's not one of them. So just the shifts. And again, it's just the stuff out here. The values before, we're going to save that language for when we get into another section, okay? When we get to the graphing, we'll still have to mess with that, though. Okay. So the next piece. Identify the domain and range, then sketch the graph. Okay. We are going to look at number six, and we're going to chat both in base graph and shifting and just use the calculator. I don't care which way you do this when we get to the quiz. So if we're going to go base graph first, reminder, it's a square root. So we want to use our perfect squares for our x values. And those are the smallest perfect squares that we have. Those are the numbers that if I take their square root, I get nice, clean numbers out. But in this case, and we're probably going to look at one, two, where we don't. If there's a number in front, that's going to stretch our base a little bit. It's going to make us multiply our y values times that number. So we're going to do that here for a moment. And those four points would represent our base points. Now again, that's not our final graph if we're doing it this way. It just lets us start to see what this stretch is going to look like. When we actually get to our final answer is when we look and see what the shifts are. So we get to play with the shifts again here. What direction shifts are we going to be going on this one? Right three down two. Right three and two. Three down two. Right three down two. And this one's just kind of off here in the middle of nowhere. Okay. So I get that drawn in. I got my graph. Cool. If you are going the calculator route here, okay? Because some of you have said all this base graph and shift and bleh. Okay. So let's say we decide we're going to do this graph just to kind of see. Maybe we want to double check. I don't know. So 2... Square root second and x squared. Make sure that minus 2 that's outside that we use our right arrow so we don't have the minus 2 under the radical. So that would be something different. So I take a peek. And I notice, hey, it kind of looks like the one I made. I'm using it as a double check. But here's what I want you to notice. There's a couple of things here we'd like to notice. First, if I start looking at my points... 3, negative 2, 4, 0, 7, 2. At least those are the ones that are right on my graph. 
I've got enough info there. I can just graph this. I don't have to make base points. That's cool. But I'm going to leave that up there for a second because we've still got domain and range to play with. Domain. X values from furthest left, again, of my connected ones here, 3 to infinity, to range my Y values bottom negative 2 to top. But here's why I wanted to keep the calculator here for a minute with what we were doing. Notice a couple of things. My domain shifted right 3. So did my domain. That has to do with my x value. My range went down 2 to negative 2. If you go with shifts, your shifts are going to tell you part of your domain and range. If you're using the calculator, the first values right after the error message are going to tell you your domain and range numeric values. So little hints are going to be there to help you no matter which route you go. You just got to figure out which one works best for you. Issues there at all. So we keep bombing on through here. Like, ooh, maybe. All right, let's see what else we got here that could run us into any sort of a deal. Um, let's see. Ooh. That looks kind of interesting. Yeah, let's do that. Let's actually come over here for a minute. Let's go... Oh, let's go to... Hardy just having a blank screen up there. That's no good. Let's go to 12. 12 kind of can mess with people on several fronts here. We'll go back through and catch some others too at the end if we want to. So, okay, first question on 12. What's my one shift? Up four, good catch that it wasn't inside the radical. So this time, a couple of things are going to change. First issue, it's a cubed root now, not a square. So don't use 0, 1, 4, and 9. That will not come out nice. This was the one where we had negatives and positives. Now, here's the, here's the first pretty nice thing that will be coming tomorrow. Okay. I am going to list up. I'm not going to tell you what to use for what. I think you'll be able to figure that out. The base chart with the x values for squares and cubes. So in other words, I'm going to have I'm going to have both of these up where you can see them. You're still going to have to figure out what the y values are, but at least you're not sitting there going Man, I wish I could remember what those x values were so I could do this. They're going to be there for you. So, once I get to my cubes, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Because I'm taking the cubed root. What do I cube to get this number? And I can just kind of check as I go. However, once again, I notice... There's a number in front. Now, if there were no number in front, I'd just, those would be my base points. But there is, so we're going to multiply them all by 2. All of my y values. And so those would be my initial points. Again, not my final points. Because I have one little piece left, that up four shift. So I would take those five points, shift them each up four, oops, got a little too quick there with my up, and then remember the cool thing about cube roots when we do domain and range? Domain and range is going to be the same thing. Because cube roots with arrows on both ends go left and right forever. They go down and up forever. No matter what. 
there were no shifts. It wouldn't matter. I still would go up and down forever. If you are going to go to the calculator on this one, now this is the one where we got to do a little bit of thinking, which is why we chose this one to do. All right, I'm going to sneak this in. When I go to type this into the calculator, and I'm going to attempt to write it above here, we're going to see what, how this goes. When we get to the radical, we're going to use parentheses instead. And we're going to use to the one third power, the exponent over the root. And then that plus 4 is not in my exponent, so I've got to hit right and hit the plus 4. So whatever's under the radical has to be in the parentheses. So like if we'd have been doing number 11, the plus 6 would have had to have been in the parentheses with my x. So I can look at the picture, and I'm seeing, okay, this looks like the one I've got there. There's my kind of S shape, my kind of snake. And again, just like we did before, though. We're just interested in the whole numbers. Negative 8, 0. Negative 1, 2. 0, 4. 1, 6. And if I really want to keep going here, and I probably should, 8, 8. Either way works. Either way gets me the same graph. So whatever you're comfortable with, go for it. But I will be watching to look for points that you're not just trying to sketch a line and call it good. So that's kind of our, our kind of back look a little bit there with our roots. But that went pretty good when we've been doing stuff here. So as we keep looking at these, okay, here comes the one hearty boo-boo on the sheet. This happens. Look at number 9 and 10. No, number 9 and 10 are not going to help you on this section. Wrong numbers. 17 through 20 is what I was shooting for here. And here's why I say that. Now, I probably won't say that tomorrow on the quiz. So we need to know our form to be able to get this into the equation. Now, the form, we've been working with this for a couple of days, so... If you can't quite remember what the form looks like in general, here's why I said look at 17 through 20. If I flip over for a second, okay, that's standard form of a circle. Now the one thing I do have to remember, and maybe it triggers in my brain as I look at that, is that when I start to plug these in, so like let's say we're doing number, I don't know, 15. Here's my H, here's my K. Here's my R. I've got to remember it's opposite. X opposite of H. So I'm going to use negative 2 instead of positive 2 in that first one. Y opposite of K. I'm going to use plus 5 instead of minus 5 in that next one. And then this is going to be my radius squared. Now again, Squaring means you're multiplying that number by itself. 12 times 12, not 12 times 2. Okay, I'm trying to help some of you avoid putting 24 tomorrow. So if you got to go to the calculator to get 12 squared, you go to the calculator to get 12 squared. And we'll get that done. So let's play with one more. Let's play with 16. We might as well. We're here already. So what's 16 going to look like? Somebody wants to rattle, I say go for it. It's 36. Exactly. Opposite of 2 is negative 2. Opposite of 1 is negative 1. Square my radius. Woohoo. No other math to have to do. No algebra to do. Just write it down and move on. That's going to be true with more of this than you think. I, let's see, what else we got? More circle stuff. Okay. Identify the center and radius, then sketch the graph. All right. So let's say we're doing 18. So we look at 18. Now remember, your center is H and K, but it's the opposite of what you see. 
Negative 4 in the parentheses, I use positive. Positive 3 in the parentheses, I use negative. And then this isn't my radius, that's my radius squared. So whatever number's there, we take the square root of it. Whether it's a whole number, a decimal, we've seen it can be both. So I plot my center, and then I go three, up and left and down and right, and I do my best job to create a curve around it. And that's it. Switch signs, square root that number on the end, and call it a day. So let's see here. Let's 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 try another one of these out. Um let's do let's do 20. Let's let's turn it into like the evens mix here. All right, I talk less on this one. Positive two, positive four, thank you very much. What about my radius? Two, square root of four, nicely done. Two, four, two in each direction. Ready to roll. So, I mean, I need to know a little bit about the form. i got to keep reminding myself of all this opposite stuff. But otherwise, not going to be too bad. So, eh, let's see. We're getting near the end here. And I'll say it again. No, the quiz will not be anywhere near this long. Not even close. Just wanted to get you plenty of practice here. So, get to the back. Graph the equation and tell me the vertex. Okay, reminder. Here comes this H and K stuff again. Kind of similar to what we were seeing, more in the radical type than necessarily with the circles. H and K are still the same left, right, up, down shifts that we saw before. So it may, it may come in handy to understand my shifts, and I'm going to show you that on this first one. So just out of curiosity, what would my two shifts be here? Thought I heard it. Right two, up four. You're like, Harry, you didn't ask for that. I know, but just stick with me here for a minute. So if I go right two and up four, that's my vertex. Now, if I know my form well enough, I notice looking at this, oh, my vertex is just the opposite of H, and then keep the sign of my K. Opposite of negative two is two, and that's four. So I can do it either way. I can either know my shifts, plot the point, and say, ooh, that's the vertex, or I can know the form. The last thing I have to keep track of with this is if there is, well, there's always an A value. It just depends on where it's from. Thank you. So here, since my A value is 1, it's positive. We're going to be opening up. And remember, it's air quote slope. Because I'm not just going to go up and right one, I'm also going to go up and left. I'm going to go both directions every time because I'm going to get V shapes out of this. So I have to be careful as I watch to make sure that's happening. Now I've also got to watch for little other details that sometimes I may forget about, like on 22. Ooh, let's see if we get brave on 22. What's my vertex on 22? Nice, 3, 0. Because I didn't move up or down at all. All I did was move right 3. This time, though, my A value is negative. We're opening down. Down 1 and over 1 each way. So the only difference as we're looking at these is that A value, if it gets bigger, like it is in number 23 or 24, 
Now I'm just going to go maybe, I don't know, up 3 and over 1, okay? Or down 3 and over 1 if it's number 23 as you're starting to look at some of these. That A value is just telling me how steep my V is going to be. But all the other shifting, it's the same. All this stuff connects in one way or another. So once we get that initial idea down, it's not too bad. One more thing I want to hit upon, and then if we want to go back, we can, we can do that. we got some time to work with. We're going to do some more graphing back here. I'm going to actually start at 26 because I want to hit a couple of twists that we can run into here. One way we can do it, we're always going to have options on all this stuff. We can do the calculator. We can do it with base graphs, but here's what I'm going to stress. I have a graph on here for a reason. Even if you say, I'm going to do it in my head, that's great, but I still want a graph. So, y1, ooh, it's a square root. Okay, my base people. <coughs> There's my base values for my square. There's the square root of them. But I notice there's a number in front this time. Whenever there's a number in front, I've got to multiply all of my y values by that number. And I notice something. There's no other shifts or anything. Those are the points. So, 0, 0, 1, 2, oops, 1, 2, Hardy learned how to graph, 4, 4, and 9, 6. And then my second one, you're like, okay, that's weird. It just says 6. What do I do? Y equals 6. Here's where Y equals 6. And wherever the lines cross, the x value there is my answer. Okay, that's what I'm doing my base, my graphs that way. Now, we talked before when we were doing the radicals. You can do this on a calculator. I'm cool with that. It's okay. So if you were doing this one on a calculator, you'd put the first part of the equation in the first line, you'd put the 6 in the second line. You'd hit graph, and you'd kind of watch and say, okay, are they going to cross each other somewhere? Mm, down here somewhere. I pull up my chart, and I go looking. Because remember what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the y's to be the same number, like they are right here, at 9. If you're graphing from this, remember, we just want the nice numbers. 0, 0, 1, 2, 4, 4, 9, 6. I can get them straight from the calculator, and that's a lot of 6. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. That'd be a real easy line to make right across there. Either way, perfectly acceptable. We just got to get the graph on there somehow with it. Okay. And then we're also going to do the cube root down at the bottom. Because again, I just want to make sure we're good on calculator button presses and all this other good stuff. We want no excuses for things not to go super tomorrow. Okay, so down here, we'll do both again. I1, I2, even better news this time. Okay, it's cubed, so don't forget, different numbers. 0, 1, 4, and 9. Well, 0 and 1 would be okay still, but not the other ones. But the nice news here is there are no shifts. There's no A value to play with. Those are the numbers. So I plot them. And I go ahead and connect them, because that's just what this one is going to be. And then we just got done saying that if it's a number, okay. If 
find the spot where they cross. And the only thing I really have got to keep track of here, if I've decided I'm going to be the calculator person instead, which is perfectly okay, is that I remember how to write it as a fraction. Exponent over root. So if I'm typing this in my calculator, x to the one-third on one line, plain old two on the next one. And watch them cross somewhere, we hope, maybe. Here it comes. You're like, yeah, in there somewhere. Where is somewhere? Somewhere, oh, there it went. Y values are the same. X is the answer. And again, with your points, you're just looking for all the whole numbers. So just like we did before. Negative 8, negative 8, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0, 1, 1. <coughs> and 8, 2. So again, between mix 1 and mix 2, I think everything but about three problems gets done on this. The key is online as well. Use that as a tool. 